We had finished the tour for Fighting the World, and it was our first gold record given to us in Germany. And we were really excited. So was the uh, European record company. Of course, the American record company was completely asleep about it. No shock. Same with the rest of the world. But we decided that we would get back to work and see what would happen in the future. So as it happens, the record company in America said, oh, yeah, you did good over there in Europe, boys. Let's have another record. And we're like, yeah, well, we're glad to make another record, but we have an idea that has to happen the way we want it to happen. And when we told them the idea that it was going to be an epic record that required orchestra, pipe organ, and a host of other things, they just looked at me and said, if this is supposed to be heavy metal, why does it need pipe organ and choir? And I said, because that's what it needs. And if I have to explain it, then you'd have to listen to the history of rock music going back to its early beginnings in order to understand why people use the instruments they use. It's very simple. And they're like, well, we don't think it's going to sell. We don't think it's going to go over. We don't think it's such a great idea. But okay, we'll go along with it. Because then at that point, when they agree, then it's their money. Get the idea? Before you make the record, it's your money. But after you make the record, it's their money, and they have to get their money back. So we set out to record pipe organ in England, narrations and choirs and the whole story that can't be told right now. But let's just suffice to say that when all the recordings were done in England, choirs, pipe organ, narrations, and so forth, we went back to Chicago and finished the record. And the, when the record was done and handed in, it was something that was met with, oh, we, we just understand this. This doesn't sound like uh, White Lion. This doesn't sound like Firehouse. This doesn't sound like, you know, any of the other bands in the 80s, which were currently getting, you know, huge amounts of airplay and, and great success. We just didn't fit in with that style of music. So therefore, because we didn't fit in, then we were, you know, basically considered shit. However, over in Europe, where heavy metal was created, as soon as Kings of Metal came out, it was an immediate success and it opened the doors to not only, of course, further success in Germany, but to the rest of Europe, Eastern Europe, so forth, and greater notoriety in the, re the rest of the world. After about a year of touring, as soon as we got done, we went back to America and said, okay, we think that this is probably time to say goodbye. There was no promotion or anything. And they're like, oh, what are you crazy? That was the most fantastic record we ever heard. We got to have part two immediately. So the rest of what happened is a story for another time. I guess the moral to the story is if your stomach tells you to do it, do it. And even if it's wrong, at least it was your decision. It wasn't somebody else's.